Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to mix E30 and all that goes with it and why you wanna do it and how I do it. Um, so, hope you enjoy. the very first thing I need to do is tune the car to run the way it's supposed to for the E30. All right, so now I'm gonna shut the car off so that I can go out and pump my gas. You always, always, always pump your E85 first. I'll show you how to calculate on the E85 calculator how to get the right amounts so that your end result is E30. All right, so the first thing I have to do, sorry, I'm having to be a little creative here, is test the E85 with this and make sure that it's actually a good content so that we use the right calculations in our um, calculator because if the percentage is off you have to adjust for that. Fill it up to the water line. And now comes the corn. Okay, so the first thing you do once you go into this app is you click default. That will fill in most of the holes in the bottom. Um, then you change that 91% octane that it defaults to over to 93 because that's what you'll be using. Um, all S550s have a 15.5 gallon tank. Um, I guesstimated on my 15% still left in my tank. Um, if you had half a tank, of course, you'd put 50% there, so, far, so on and so forth. Um, I also, in the percent ethanol in the tank, I put 10% right now because I'm currently running on straight 93. And that will change on the next time I fill up. It'll be 30% because that's what I'll already have in the tank is E30. Um, now, I changed right here. I changed 85 to 87 because of the variation that happened when we tested our E85 at the tank. Sometimes you might need to decrease it or increase it, but mine was 87 today. So our final calculations show us that we need 4.03 gallons of E85 and 9.15 gallons of 93. So, just got back in the car. It's about to torrential downpour outside, and people are looking at me like I'm an idiot filming this, but whatever. I don't care. So, anyway, next thing I do, I 
uh, put my tune on. I tested my ethanol and it came out to about 87%. Um, so I adjusted my formula in the calculator and then I have um, pumped my E85 first. Then I filled up completely with the 93. This should get me pretty close to E30. Um, you can safely from time to time, from what I've been told, use anywhere from E25 up to E40. You don't want to do that on a routine basis, but occasionally um, if you can't measure exactly or you had a little bit more um, left in your tank to start with than you had originally done, you know, it's going to th throw off your percentages a little bit. It's okay time to time. To be completely honest with you, the best way to make sure that you act, your numbers are accurate and that you're not causing any issues for your engine is to make sure that you install an ethanol content sensor. Um, I have one. We have not put it back on the car since we remodded. We were planning on doing it that day, but with the extra work we had to do with the welding and all that mess, um, it took longer than we planned. So that was one thing that did not get put back on the car was the ethanol content sensor. So that will be going on this weekend. But for this time being, um, I was, my, my uh, tank was almost empty. So I wanted to go ahead and switch now rather than having to wait till I emptied it again. I'm kind of impatient. I want to get back to E30. It's so much better feeling in the car, even though the car feels good now, the E30 is so much better. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and did it and my numbers may be off a little bit. That's okay. We're going to, like I said, install the ethanol content sensor sometime probably tomorrow and then I'll get some kind of a, uh, you know, idea. I'll, I'll get an exact percentage once I put the, um, ethanol content sensor back on, but that'll kind of let me know where I am. Luckily for me, this gas station that I pretty much always come to is very, um, uh, their, their ethanol content is always pretty, um, stable. It's every time I've come here, it's been between, um, 83 and 87%. So it's been very, very good. And I've been coming here for several, several months. So it's, it's good E85, um, nice and consistent. So know now that I have been doing this for a while, I do not check my E85 every single time. I do not do that, um, testing every single time because I have tested so many times here and it's always been consistent. Now, if you always have to go to a different E85 station or if you end up, um, you know, not ever getting consistent numbers, then yeah, until you, you need to be checking your E85 percentage so that you're not getting some crazy low or high mixture. Neither one of those is going to be good for your engine. So just make sure that you are testing um, until you see that you're going to the same gas station every single time and then it's you know, you're getting consistent numbers. Once you get there, then I would say I test typically about um, once every couple of months, as long as it's at the same gas station, you know. And I always test if I go somewhere that is not my typical gas station. So if we're traveling, which yes, I do stay on my E85 when we travel. If I am traveling or if we are, you know, just away from the house for any reason, and I need to fill up, I will test that E85 every single time just to make sure because I don't know how consistent that station actually is. The, the one other thing that I wanna mention is the very first time you fill up with E85, uh, or excuse me, very first time you fill up with E30, do not think, oh, holy shit, my car's gonna have so much more power, yada, 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 and go right out on the road and floor it because um, I have not done that and that's only because I listened to someone else who gave me the advice not to do that because when he did that, he got all kinds of codes. You have to remember that you need to get that fuel mixture, that 30% ethanol mixture, you need to get that down into the fuel rails before you are going to feel any difference, which means that you are gonna have to get that E30 into your engine before your engine can respond like that too. So be easy on it for the first mile or two. Um, I honestly, I usually give it about five miles before I get on it. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get on it at all today because as you can see right there, that is not my window tent. That is black as hell. It is about to storm like a beast outside. So I'm gonna hurry up and get home. So I'm glad I was able to make this part of the video and um, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so now we start her up. <laughs> 